Now, Germany has recorded more than 100,000 COVID deaths, a number that other Western European countries, including the UK and France, passed several months ago. Europe is at the epicentre of the crisis, according to the World Health Organization. A surge in cases across the continent is pushing politicians to bring in new restrictions. Mark Lobel reports. Hospitals are under strain as a highly infectious COVID variant sweeps across Europe alongside vaccine hesitancy and waning vaccine immunity, eliciting a new wave of restrictions, like policing the pandemic in Paris, incentivizing injections in Italy, and guarding the trains in Germany. Its incoming coalition government has reportedly resisted another national lockdown for now, despite one in place in neighboring Austria and soon Slovakia. But it will form a new task force to tackle the crisis and Germany's comparatively low vaccination rate. Impfen is the way out of this pandemic. Vaccination is the way out of this pandemic. In facilities where particularly vulnerable groups are cared for, we should make vaccination mandatory. An expansion of this provision remains to be explored. 2G here means entry only for the vaccinated or recently recovered, no longer allowing a negative test to count, keeping the unvaccinated out. In just over a week, 2G will feature across Italy, stopping the unvaccinated entering cinemas, indoor bars and stadiums. And vaccines already mandatory for health workers will be compulsory for the police, military and teachers. As restrictions persist, signs of unrest emerge, like in France's Martinique. But despite the visible anger, new measures to combat rising cases across France are expected to be unveiled on Thursday. And even though rioting erupted during a partial lockdown in the Netherlands at the weekend, measures there are likely to get stricter on Friday. Mark Lobel, BBC News. Well, let's talk about Germany and uh, go over to our correspondent, Damien McGuinness, who's in Berlin. Damien, Germany about to finally get a new government after weeks of talks. What's its strategy on COVID likely to be? Yeah, it was interesting. Yesterday, when the coalition deal was unveiled, there was really, well, it was far from a celebratory mood. They talked for the first 15 minutes about the dreadful situation here in Germany right now. They said it's a situation of crisis, which is why the incoming government is setting up a crisis team, which will meet every day with the Chancellor and with the Chancellor's office in order to assess the situation and really to see what sorts of measures need to be implemented and how the current measures are doing. Here at this hospital, uh, the Charité Hospital in the centre of Berlin, Germany's largest hospital, like many places, uh, scheduled non-essential services are having to be rescheduled and pushed back. And what we're now seeing in Germany is many hospitals, particularly in eastern Germany, are having to move COVID patients, and that may start today, uh, to other parts of Germany which are seeing lower infection rates. So we're really seeing a, an emergency situation in the country and it's the worst phase of the pandemic that Germany has ever known because, as we've said, this terrible new record of 100,000 deaths, an overall death toll has now been reached, which uh, has shocked people here because over the summer, daily death rates were very low and the infection rate was very low. But over the last month, we've seen it really rise. And that's for a number of reasons. One is that the vaccination rate is slightly lower than the EU average. It's still just under 70%. So it's not very low, but it's low than it needs to be. And in particular, there are still many older people who haven't had the vaccine. And that's what's different here compared to other countries such as the UK. So the real priority for the incoming government is not only to assess these, these measures, such as excluding non-vaccinated people from cafes, bars and restaurants, but also to really see what new measures might need to be imposed in, in the future, including compulsory vaccines for certain groups of the population. And how much resistance, how much reluctance is there for further restrictions and more measures? 
Well, it's interesting because in previous waves of the pandemic, there have been protests on the streets against measures and the ha there was quite a, a virulent anti-vax movement here in Germany last summer. That seems to have dissipated. We don't see at the moment any outspoken protests or any demonstrations. And that could be because the situation is so serious. You only need to look inside those hospitals to see what is happening to people themselves. There is, among a certain minority of the population here in Germany, a certain reluctance to get the vaccine. Uh, there is traditionally a, a sense of scepticism among some people about vaccination in general. But that is a minority. And I think it's fair to say that the general debate here in Germany, among the German mainstream, is really calling for more measures or at least more concerted measures because we've sort of seen this political vacuum over the past month and a half where we've had an outgoing government from Angela Merkel's Conservative-led government leaving and the incoming centre-left-led government coming in. And that's why there was such pressure on the, co the new coalition to really get this deal through in order to get a bit of a, better, a bit of concerted action, really, in order to sort of say, OK, what are we going to do about fighting the pandemic going forward? Because it is being seen here in Germany as one of the big challenges, if not the key challenge in the short term for this new incoming government. Damien, thank you for the moment. Uh, Damien McGuinness there in Berlin outside a hospital dealing with that situation in Germany.